Welcome back to AI Governance and Risk Management. So first we're going to talk about what is AI Governance. So risk management has been around for a long time. There's a long history of risk management. So some of you who might be risk professionals uh, might be familiar with things like ISO 31000, uh, which is a standard for uh, risk management, or COSO has enterprise risk management. Um, and there are even standards which, or uh, regulations which are model specific. So SR 117, which was uh, put, up by the, put out by the US Federal Reserve and is uh, uh, regulated by the SEC, uh, covers the, the, the governance of algorithms. And there's a lot of information out there about risk management in general best practices, internal controls, meant to limit, and limit an organization's risk. So um, we're not going to try to cover these things uh, in detail. What's important here is, is the, the focus on AI risks and AI governance. So here's an example of, uh, from ISO 31000, how they conceptualize risk management. And of course, central to this process is risk assessment. So you can see that at the, at the core of this, uh, risk assessment is, is a, a primary and most important uh, objective. And so you identify risk, you analyze risk, you evaluate risk, and then of course you need to have some risk mitigation or mi risk treatment at the end of this. So we have an entire course uh, on risk and impact assessments, algorithmic risk and impact assessments. So how do we identify and uh, analyze and, and prioritize risks that are unique uh, to AI systems or autonomous systems and algorithmic systems. And then of course, uh, there are other uh, pieces surrounding this like recording and reporting. Uh, we need to monitor and review. We also uh, need to communicate these results. And of course, before any of this, the scope, context, and criteria. So a lot of this was covered in our uh, risk management course. Uh, a, a risk assessment course. And now what we're going to talk about is uh, what we do with the results of those. So this is for, for general enterprise risk. And COSO, in fact, has an enterprise risk management framework as well. And uh, the two are similar, ISO and COSO, uh, but, but they're, they differ in a lot of ways. And the way it's conceptualized is very different. Uh, and so here, there are sort of, you can see there's uh, there's sort of five categories, and there's 20 different activities under those categories, uh, some centered around governance and culture, strategy and objective setting, the actual performance of the risk assessment, uh, the review and revision of that process, and then the information communicated and reporting around this. So the point that I want to emphasize here is don't get overwhelmed by the volume of information. Uh, different standards will be more or less uh, relevant given a specific use case. So what I want you to do is to focus on first principles. So uh, there's a lot out there, and every time you approach a new situation, either when you're working as a consultant, working with a particular organization in a particular field or industry uh, or geographic region where different regulations are in place, uh, there are a lot of factors to consider. So focus on first principles, which is what we're going to be talking about uh, in this first week of the course. And also be skeptical and challenge assumptions because a lot of times people might follow a particular framework because that's the framework everybody follows. And there may be ways uh, if you sort of challenge the reasoning behind some of those frameworks or some of the choices that are made you might be able to find uh, efficiencies, find holes or gaps where things could be made better, more safe, more ethical. So focus on first principles and be skeptical and challenge assumptions. So in terms of first principles, let's think a little bit about what is the purpose of risk management in general, uh, ignoring AI. And the purpose of risk management program is to enhance an organization's ability to, to achieve its mission vision, strategic objectives, and strengthen its competitive position. It does so by limiting downside risk, ensuring quality of the organization's products and services, and the primary mechanism for doing that is by limiting the downside risk, and building trust with stakeholders, critical to the success of the mission. So an organization has 
uh, mission, vision, it has objectives, it has a comp competitive position. And risk manages, management is meant to limit the downside risk and really ensure that they have the best products and services because it is a risk if they don't. It could, it could uh, deter their uh, objectives, it could uh, destroy value, and building trust is part of this. And so uh, risk mitigation is really the most important thing for a risk management system. It's in the name, but it's important to understand that um, that is the main objective. So as we're going through this course, always be thinking what is the main objective. Now, there are other issues at play here. So building trust, for instance, uh, doesn't also relent, uh, depends on other things like accountability, for instance. Knowing that someone is accountable when a risk does happen, that builds trust. And so it's not 100% just identifying and mitigating risks. There's also uh, sort of higher level issues here. But at the end of the day, focus on the fact that the primary objective is to limit that downside risk. And then there's a lot of upside potential as you do that. So I wanna talk a little bit about the difference between risk mitigation and risk management. So the uh, risk mitigation essentially means that what you're doing is reducing the probability of a particular harm or a particular problem, a risk, from occurring. So uh, there is a potential, there's some likelihood that a risk might happen or a harm might happen or a problem might happen. And uh, you are trying to mitigate that so you can lower the probability that it happens. Or you can also do the same thing by reducing the severity if it does occur. So if you, if you take our uh, uh, algorithmic risk and impact assessment course, we talk about magnitude and likelihood and how we uh, assess those and uh, reducing those two is really what risk mitigation is about. Make it less likely to happen, and if it were to happen, uh, limit the severity of that. Risk management is uh, different. It's a little broader. And what it's really trying to do is make sure that risk mitigation happens. So it's the meta process, uh, it's this infrastructure around making sure that risk mitigation is actually happening. And in the process, providing accountability and a means of improvement and building trust. So risk management sits on top and its primary function is to get that risk mitigation to happen while building in accountability, making sure that you are improving on that process and in the meantime, building trust with critical stakeholders. So let's now get back to AI governance and risk management. Where does this fit in the picture? Well, the only difference really is that it's focused on unique AI risks. And we all know that AI is risky. And uh, in, in recent time, we've seen lots of examples of AI incidences where algorithms could be biased, algorithms could be misused, uh, algorithms uh, can harm people. And so there is risk which is uniquely associated with AI, including security risks, uh, privacy risks. So uh, AI governance and risk management really just focuses on those unique risks. Now it's important to understand that right now, this may not be part of an enterprise risk management or compliance or legal or model risk management. All of these uh, different functions in, in modern enterprises right now uh, haven't necessarily incorporated AI governance into that framework. Um, I think eventually they will, but right now it sort of stands apart. And in fact, uh, a lot of times there's a, there will be a separate function, if there is a function at all, which focuses just on AI governance. But there's clearly going to be a lot of interaction between these different functions uh, and AI governance because in the end of the day, they're all looking to mitigate risk to the organization. And this is just AI-specific risk. This is very early days, so I would expect that there are a lot of changes over the next few years. So, which is why we're gonna to try to focus on broad concepts and then go narrow on a few emerging regulations and emerging best practices, but knowing that those will likely evolve and change over time. So there are a lot of references for this course. Um, I've listed, listed a couple here. You'll see in the next, uh, in the section previous to this, there is a uh, resources for the course where all of these are linked. So we'll be looking at our own research at the Algorithmic Bias Lab. We had a year-long project 
looking at the current state of AI governance, where we went and talked to leaders in a number of industries and at large and small organizations, really looking at what are the pr best practices that they're doing currently, how do they know that they're working, looking for metrics of success. And so uh, I encourage you to read that. It's not a, it's not a really long report. Uh, but in there, you'll see that the current state right now is that it's really in its infancy. And I think there's a lot of work to integrate AI governance into uh, organizations, but we still don't know what the real metrics of success are. How do we know that they're working and which ones are working better than others? We'll look at NIST's AI Risk Management Framework. This has recently been published, uh, depending on when you uh, are watching this course. Um, and so it's, it's very comprehensive, it's a voluntary framework, and so we're gonna be digging into this uh, and it can be uh, quite influential. NIST, in fact, has an ordinary risk management framework as well. This is an AI-specific risk management framework. There are various ISO standards which are relevant, including the uh, ordinary risk management, but ISO is developing several AI-specific uh, AI governance standards, which we will uh, talk about. They're unfortunately behind a paywall, you have to license them, and so we won't be giving away too much information about them, but we will discuss them. And then the EU AI Act, and then a number of regulations uh, in the EU and uh, the United States, which do specify risk management frameworks and requirements uh, potentially uh, required by law. So take a look at that reference list. So next we're going to start digging into the basic building blocks of this AI governance and risk management framework and uh, try to parse out what are the things that we need to put together so that we can effectively mitigate and manage the risks of AI.